Did you know that Marvel made their own bootleg version of Spider-Man? In 1977, Marvel released an issue of their Spidey's Super Story series, where Spider-Man was cloned by Doctor Doom. And that mirror clone became... Webman. But Webman was very short-lived, as he dies at the end of the issue when the mirror used to create him is shattered. But since his creation, despite being fairly unknown and an obscure character, he's stuck around in the hearts and minds of some fans. He's got an action figure, an alternate suit in the Avengers game, a cameo in the greatest Spider-Man movie of all time, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Don't believe me? Look, you can even see him in the concept art for the movie. So why am I making this video? Because today, I'm gonna be making my very own Webman suit, and I'm gonna take you along for the ride with me. Also, I'm pretty sure this is like the first Webman suit ever made, if you don't count printed costumes, which, which I don't. Now let's get to designing. This is Webman, right? He's supposed to be the opposite of everything Spider-Man is. He's an evil clone of Spider-Man. I wanted to take that idea and also apply it to the design of the costume itself. By that I mean taking the usual friendly, cleaner look that Spider-Man has and flipping it in the complete other direction. This time, I wanted to make him look odd and messy. This meant using messy web lines for the costumes and making the spider logos look spindly and weird. But then as I started brainstorming this idea, I realized that I made an incredibly similar concept like this just a month or two ago when I was hired to design concepts for a fan film. Luckily it went unused, so I was able to repurpose it for my own needs. This old design itself was inspired by some old Spider-Man 1 concept art. Not really worth mentioning, but I thought I would anyway. The most I took from it was having slightly see-through eyes and having webbing on the secondary portions of the costume. Alright, so now that we've got the design out of the way, let's think about those fabrics. For the blue, I'll be using this blue two-way stretch hexagonal fabric I found on the Joann's website. I got it a while ago and I never really used it until now. It is two-way stretch and two-way stretch is notoriously difficult to work with so I'll have to adjust my suit pattern appropriately. For the red, I'll use the incredibly sought-after clear dot red spandex. It'll make the secondary color of this suit textured and shiny. And I'm also going to be painting webbing over the red sections too, to make the suit feel so much more messier. And that's about it so far. I think I covered everything. So I guess now it's finally time to get to making the damn thing. Don't you guys love the 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 ambience of the the parking lot? You can hear all the honks and the screaming and the shooting from in from the comfort of your patio. So hello, I made the webman suit. Uh, it was it's been a while since I wrote the script for this video, so it's my what I'm saying might be a little disjointed compared to what you just watched. This is my Webman suit. Um, I don't know how much I talked about it, but again, I'm gonna go over it again just in case I didn't. Uh, I wanted to go for a more gross, creepy feel with this costume. I wanted it to be the exact opposite of everything Spider-Man usually is. So for example, that would be clean webbing. That would be right side up spider logos. That would be having empty blue, or I guess secondary portions of the costume. I wanted this to be the anti-Spider-Man suit. I'm a very big fan of the spider logo on the front. I really wanted to take a, a more anatomically correct approach to the spider by giving it like multiple leg joints, having like detailed pedipalps on its face, which are like the mandibles, having like visible eyes and just bumps and all kinds of weird textures all over it. As you can see, I've implemented the blue hexagon pattern onto this costume. Uh, it's The blue ink is slightly darker than the fabric itself, and that of course is overlaid with the messy metallic puffy paint that's all over the costume, including the red parts. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of how the webbing covers the blue area of this costume. 
I think due to the fact that the ink that was used on this blue fabric is so dark, it causes the webbing to get lost within the, the suit itself. I looked on camera and I saw that this suit looks way darker than it actually looks in person. So I might do some color correcting. You'll see, you'll either A, see what it actually looks like right now, or B, you'll see the color corrected version of it. I, editing Kai will figure it out. Of course the boots aren't anything to really speak of. There is this black band that wraps around the feet that I wanted to do. Not for any particular reason, I just thought it made it look more complicated and messy. The boots are one of my least favorite parts of this suit right now because I haven't sewed on the metal fasteners that will keep them in place. I probably should do that since this two-way stretch is, isn't the best material to be used for boots and such. But I do kind of like how baggy they look and it gives it sort of a, a messier feel. I think one of the quickest ways to make your suit look odd is to make it look baggy. Let's talk about the mask here. The mask is actually one of my favorite parts of this costume. There's a little bit of mesh particle. And the mask I gotta get rid of. Nasty. Let's get the thumbnail shot. Boom, there you go. So the mask is one of my favorite things about this costume. I love the mirror reflected lenses. For some people they may not like them, but I think on this costume they really shine. I love how they're not completely flat and they almost distort the image of whatever they're looking at. It sort of adds to that feeling I was already going for. This mask is actually incredibly loose and the lenses are made with mirror tint that you're supposed to use for the windows of your car. Although I don't even think you'd be allowed to do... I don't even think you'd be allowed to use this kind of mirror tint. Like it's way too reflect. I'm pretty sure you get pulled over for this, but anyway. This is one of my easier masks to put on due to the fact that it uses two-way stretch. Two-way stretch is really difficult because I had to edit my pattern so that two-way stretch could fit over a pattern that would realistically stretch in four ways. So I had to stretch it in a direction the fabric wouldn't have to. It's kind of hard to explain. But as you can see here, my eyes are completely reflective. You might be able to see my eyes through it, but again, that just really adds to the feeling I was looking for. I wanted this costume to feel odd and gross looking. I, I wanted it to implement a lot of features that I know would divide people and make them feel, oh, A, I either really love it, or B, that's just a weird choice. But I kind of want—I I really wanted to pick polarizing options like that for this costume. I love it. I think it looks good. And also, it's Spider-Man eat-proof. You can eat in it without taking the mask off. And I think that's a good test of any Spider-Man mask. One thing I also really want to talk about is the gloves of this costume. I really... I'm sorry, I had a burp. Uh, the palms look particularly odd because they don't feel connected to the the webbing on the palm doesn't really feel that connected to the web around it which i actually really enjoy if you look at the wrist you can see it's got a little web pattern on it and that's supposed to be i guess where webman's webbies come from also the top of the fingers don't have any horizontal webbing on them it just has a vertical line that stretches down the finger almost like a claw also, something really cool about this costume is since it's got puff paint on the finger, it can actually be used on smartphones, which was something I didn't know until this suit. So if you have a Spider-Man bodysuit and you need to be able to use your phone, putting a bit of puffy paint on the edge of your finger would actually be a really good way for you to do some tippy tappies on your phone. All right, so the I've essentially reviewed I can't, I can't do it, my voice is a bit broken. Just imagine I did it. I'm, no, I edited it. So now that I've gone over every like design aspect of the costume I wanted to talk about, I think I'm now going to put it on.